As per the latest reports, the orbital test flight of Starship is just around the corner. According to Gary Henry, senior advisor for National Security Space Solutions at SpaceX, both the Super Heavy booster and the launch pad were in good shape following the 31-engine static fire test on February 9. By all appearances, the test was a spectacular success for SpaceX. 31 of Super Heavy's 33 Raptors ignited during the test, and despite the lack of a water deluge system, the concrete below the launch mount survived more than 35 meganewtons of thrust and intense heat, with only minor damages. SpaceX is already installing a water deluge system at Starbase to protect the launch pad from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during tests and launches. Installing the deluge system and building a sufficiently massive water supply will take several weeks. SpaceX has not confirmed if the deluge system will be ready before the orbital test flight, and with the launch attempt rapidly approaching, this looks less likely. The strongest sign that Starship's first orbital launch attempt is imminent will be Ship 24's return to the pad and stacking atop Booster 7, as well as SpaceX's receipt of an FAA launch license. According to Gary Henry, Starship remains on track to launch as early as March, and he expects the Federal Aviation Administration to grant a license for the orbital launch in the very near future. Henry said that once SpaceX performs that orbital launch demonstration, the company will move ahead rapidly with operational Starship launches. The initial operational mission will carry second-generation Starlink satellites into orbit. The on-orbit refilling mission and Starship Lunar Human Landing System uncrewed demo mission are also on the list. According to a Space News report, Gary Henry outlined his views on the Starship rocket cargo concept at the 2023 Space Mobility Conference. Henry is working with the Air Force Research Laboratory on potential concepts for using rockets for point-to-point -point cargo delivery under a $102 million five-year contract awarded in 2020. Other space companies have signed agreements with the U.S. Transportation Command to explore rocket cargo concepts, but only SpaceX has won a large contract. The military envisions a future when it could be cheaper to send cargo via rocket than by aircraft. In a national security or humanitarian crisis, a launch vehicle would fly from a U.S. launch site and either land on a barren field to deliver cargo or drop it by air. For the rocket cargo program to be viable, the United States Department of Defense expects to use launch providers that fly frequently so they can offer competitive pricing. Henry states that, with reference to Starship, SpaceX anticipates a decrease in the cost of mass to orbit from $2,000 per kilogram to $200 per kilogram. However, Elon Musk claims the price might drop as low as $10 per kilograms. Final pre-launch works are ongoing at the launch site to prepare Super Heavy Booster 7 and orbital launch mount for the historic test flight. The booster received a brand new hydraulic power unit on February 18, replacing the unit removed from the vehicle on February 15. The hydraulic power unit is designed to supply pressurized oil to the booster's hydraulic actuation system. Scaffoldings were recently added to the launch mount so that the aft area of Booster 7 could be accessed. Inside are several massive squids of plumbing for the 33 engines, methane tank downcomer, oxygen header tank, several valves, and other pieces of hardware. A final inspection of these systems will be required before the orbital launch attempt. SpaceX has begun installing shielding on the orbital launch mount. The shields protect all exposed piping, manifolds, control panels, and other components from engine exhaust and debris. Some shields have doors fitted to access the piping and control panels inside if necessary. Shields were also placed on the booster quick disconnect mechanism. You can see how the orbital launch mount will look with all the shields installed in this animation created by Ryan Hansen Space. Shielding installation must be completed before the launch attempt. SpaceX carried out the Starship 26's first cryogenic proof test on Tuesday, February 21. Loading of liquid nitrogen into the oxygen tank of the ship began at 10.35 a.m. local time, and the tank was filled in about two and a half hours. The ship was held in that state for the next 50 minutes, and in the meantime, the six hydraulic rams installed underneath the pad may have exerted force on the aft section to simulate the thrust of six Raptor engines. Loading liquid nitrogen into the methane tank began at around 1.50 p.m., and the tank was filled within 30 minutes. After holding in that state for the next 20 minutes, both the methane and oxygen tanks were completely drained. Apart from ensuring the reliability of the plumbing, these types of cryoproof tests provide engineers with the data they need to determine whether a rocket can endure internal stresses and whether the structure has any leaks. Starship 25 was removed from suborbital launch pad B on Thursday, February 23. The ship had completed several cryoproof tests last year, but had not undergone any testing since being placed on pad B on January 17. Ship 25 was rolled back to the build site on Thursday night.
The ship was rolled out to SpaceX's Massey's test facility, located 7.5 kilometers from Starbase, on Friday night. SpaceX will perform Ship 25 testing at this site in the coming days. Since SpaceX owns the 1.2 kilometers road that leads up to Massey's from Highway 4, no road closure is necessary for Starship testing there. At the build site, teams stacked the nose cone payload bay section of Starship 27 atop the propellant tank section. This completes the primary structure of Ship 27. Just like Starship 26, Ship 27 also lacks forward and aft flaps and thermal protection system tiles. However, the ship has a payload bay which Ship 26 lacks. Ship 27 may carry Starlink satellites into orbit during its orbital mission. Please check out my previous video to learn why Starship 26 and 27 look much different from other Starship prototypes. Link in the description. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. The Russian space agency, Roscosmos, launched an uncrewed Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft to the International Space Station on February 24 as part of a plan to replace the damaged Soyuz MS-22 vehicle. Soyuz MS-22 was launched to the space station on September 21 last year, carrying U.S. astronaut Frank Rubio and cosmonauts Sergei Prokopyev and Dmitry Pedelin. The capsule developed troubles on December 14 when a coolant leak occurred. The leak's origin has been attributed to a micrometeoroid strike that left a 0.8 mm diameter hole in the exterior. While the incident posed no immediate threat to the space station or its activities, Roscosmos determined a new Soyuz was needed to replace the leaky spacecraft. As MS-23 was launched uncrewed, Roscosmos used the opportunity to deliver 429 kilograms of equipment and supplies to the station, just like a progress supply ship. Following the successful launch, the spacecraft separated from its Soyuz launch vehicle and began a two-day journey to the space station. The capsule is scheduled to dock autonomously with the space station on February 26 at 1 a.m. UTC, and it might have happened by the time you watch this video. The MS-23 spacecraft will return to Earth in September, carrying the MS-22 crew members. Meanwhile, the leaky Soyuz MS-22 will return to Earth uncrewed on March 28. Nearly a week before the Soyuz MS-23 launch, a Russian Progress cargo ship, loaded with trash and no longer needed equipment, undocked from the space station after suffering a depressurization in its cooling system. The Progress MS-21 cargo ship leaked coolant on February 11, less than two months after the Soyuz MS-22 incident. Based on initial analysis, the Progress MS-21 leak was caused by an external impact, most probably a micrometeoroid. After MS-21 spacecraft was undocked from the station, it was disposed of over the South Pacific Ocean as planned. NASA and SpaceX plan to launch the Crew-6 mission to the International Space Station on Monday, February 27. Crew-6, as the name suggests, will be SpaceX's sixth operational crew trip to the ISS for NASA. The mission will transport NASA astronauts Stephen Bowen and Warren Hoburg, Roscosmos cosmonaut Andriy Fedyev, and astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi of the United Arab Emirates to the International Space Station. Al Nayadi will make history as the first Arab astronaut to fly a long duration mission to the orbiting lab. The four astronauts will ride to the orbiting laboratory aboard Crew Dragon Endeavour and dock at the station on February 28. During their six-month stay at the space station, the crew will undertake important scientific missions aimed at advancing human space exploration and improving life on Earth. The crew's six mission members arrived at Kennedy Space Center on February 21, after a short flight aboard a NASA private jet from Houston. After speaking with reporters, the crew members were transported to the astronaut crew quarters facility at Kennedy Space Center, where they will live in quarantine and continue to prepare ahead of their launch. The Dragon capsule Endeavour is now at Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. The spacecraft has flown three previous ISS missions. Demo 2, the first crewed test flight of the Crew Dragon spacecraft, Crew 2, which launched in April 2021, and AX-1, a private flight operated by Houston company Axiom Space. The Falcon 9 rocket that will carry the astronauts to space has already completed the dry dress rehearsal and a static firing of the nine Merlin engines. Images from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, published on February 21, reveal that China's Zhurong Mars rover has not moved since at least September 2022. Zhurong arrived on Mars in May 2021 as part of the Tianwen-1 mission, which included a lander and an orbiter. The rover roamed on the Red Planet without incident until May 2022, when it was put into hibernation to prepare for the severe Martian winter. Zhurong was supposed to resume its operations autonomously around December. However, based on the most recent images, the rover may not have exited hibernation as expected. 
there are many reasons that the rover might remain in hibernation. Dust might have accumulated on Zhurong's solar panels, reducing their efficiency. Moreover, data from NASA's Perseverance rover indicates that Mars is still relatively cold, possibly below Zhurong's working temperatures. The Chinese space authorities have not yet provided an update on the rover's status. Even though the rover has not woken up, it has already accomplished its primary mission goals and has far exceeded its initial three-month life expectancy. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.